All right, so today we're going to do a much needed refactor of our tests by adding in the flask extension flask testing which adds a number of useful features beyond the standard Python unit test library. So let's start by running our current test suites. Let's go ahead and activate your virtual environment. So work on discover flask and then run python test.py to run the test suite. And you can see that we're getting four failures. So we'll address this issue in just a minute. So for now, let's go ahead and get Flask testing set up. So pip install Flask testing. And then let's go ahead and add that to our requirements file. Okay, so now within Sublime, Go ahead and open up our tests here. Let's reorganize this just a little bit. And let's go ahead and add in from flask.extension testing. We'll import the test case here. We also need to grab the DB. So we need to start by adding a base test case. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and grab that from the repo. So discover flask, test.py. I'm going to go ahead and grab the base test case here. Good to start, let's go ahead and comment out these three things here. And I'll explain what these are used for in a minute. So this base test case establishes our test configuration, which we still need to add. It creates all of our database tables before each test and then deletes all of the tables at the end of every test run. So that means each of these tests are going to run against a clean database. And then each of our future test cases will also inherit from this base test case. And that'll help keep our code dry. So we can start by getting rid of all the test clients in the tests. And we can do that because we are creating an instance of our Flask app here. And then since we got rid of that tester variable, let's go ahead and change this to self.client. So self.client. Okay. And now we need to add in our test config class. So if we open up our configuration file here, and again, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and grab this from the repository. So I'll just copy that, paste it. So again, we're inheriting from our base config, and then we're overwriting debug here. So debug is true. And we're also setting a database URI and we're using SQLite in memory, so this should speed up our tests. So if we go back to our test file here, let's go ahead and update Flask test case to inherit from this base test case. So now let's go ahead and run our tests. Okay, cool. So it looks like we're only getting three failures now. Um, let's see. I'm not actually sure which one is passing now, but hey, that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and refactor the rest of our test suite. 
So we look up our first test here that's failing. Test, correct login. We're actually getting this error. So invalid credentials, please try again. And let's just run our app real quick. So Python manage.py run server. So we get that error. When literally we enter the invalid credentials. So if we go back to our tests, so this test correct login. So we're trying to log in with the this username admin and the password admin. So since that user is not in the database, then it's going to error out with this invalid credentials. So we need to go ahead and add that user in. And for now, we can just go ahead and add the user creation to our setup method. And that's what we had going on here. So db session .add user admin. And then we need to grab from project models. And then we can import user. And just remember the user gets added before each test via the setup method and then removed after each test via the teardown. So let's test this out now. Okay, cool. So we're down to one error. So this test is just testing to make sure that some posts show up on that main page. And again, since there's no posts in the database, this is going to fail. So we actually need to add some posts to the database. So if we uncomment this line, then update the import, so blog post, and we can go ahead and update the assertion since this is the text associated with the post. So, test show up on the main page. Let's go ahead and paste that there. Now let's go ahead and test this out. Cool. Everything's green, everything passes. Perfect. Is there anything else that we need to test for? Did I miss anything? If so, be sure to comment below. And next time we're going to be looking at another Flask extension called Flask Login, which we can use to simplify user authentication. All right, I will see you then, and thanks for watching.